Hello everybody and welcome to Provis Gaming and a brand new series for this channel, Urban Empire. Some of you guys might be familiar with this game, it was released fairly recently and has gotten a little bit of coverage from the larger YouTubers. Uh, if you don't know what it is, it is a city builder game with a, a bit of a political simulator aspect to it. Basically, we play as a family over five generations that is the mayor of a city in a fictional area called Swirelia. And uh, we grow our city from kind of the Renaissance era to the modern metropolis that you would expect over several generations. It's pretty fun. There's a bit of a political simulator aspect to this game as well as just city building. I like it a lot, but I didn't want to cover this on release day. I wanted to take a couple of weeks to learn some of the mechanics and bring you a proper, uh, well-thought-out Let's Play rather than a first impressions video. And I'm glad to say, I think I've managed to nail down some of the mechanics and develop a really strong strategy for the early game. Um, and I, I kind of know where some of the larger YouTubers made some mistakes. A good example would be Quill18. I love Quill18, great guy, I would love to do collabs with him someday, but um, when he was first uh, in introducing this game onto his channel, he made some pretty sizable mistakes in his approach. Uh, and I think I have a counter-argument that could be offered, and I think it's far more effective. So, without any further ado, let's go ahead and play a new series of Urban Empire. We will be doing a new campaign. There is no uh, sandbox mode that I'm aware of. You have to play as a campaign. Now, there are four families that you can pick from. The Von Filzens, which is um, kind of a blue-blood aristocratic family in the uh, Austrian Empire, Austria-Hungary. Uh, they're traditionalists. They believe in social hierarchy. They can be... I don't know, they could be a bit of a sticklers, honestly, for tradition and stuff like that. Kind of a kind of an authoritarian figure, but pretty effective. They get a lot of prestige. They're a very wealthy, well-respected family. We have the uh, saint Elian. Is that how you pronounce it? I have no idea. But these are basically uh, a very scientifically minded family. They love progressivism, they love innovation, they love technology and stuff like that. Uh, they can be a little bit overly optimistic sometimes. But otherwise, if you want to have a lot of technology and um, a lot of really progressive edicts, kind of more more on the liberal, more uh, laissez-faire side of the economy and stuff like that. These guys might work out pretty well for you guys. We have the Kilgannons, who we will be playing as today. This is a um, this is actually an Irish immigrant family that uh, will be... They, they come from more humble roots, let's say that. As opposed to the Von Filzens, which starts off as an aristocratic family, these guys kind of started from nothing, but through hard work and uh, a good work ethic managed to put themselves up on top and they're going to be they're going to be contracted out by the empire very popular with the proletariat uh, i think they have kind of a happiness boost with their people but not necessarily the most effective administrators a lot of the city services can be a bit more expensive but ultimately i think we're going to be fine and then lastly we have the shuskis the shuskis I, I don't know they're they're russian immigrants basically and these guys are patrons of the arts and stuff like that. I actually am not too familiar with what makes them unique. I haven't tried playing as them before. Well, they sound kind of fun, and maybe we'll pick them up someday in the future. But we're going to be playing as the Kilgannons. We are going to be respected by the proletariat. It'll be fun. Let's select them out. This is going to be our first character right here. Uh, he starts off as an optimist, which increases our goodwill, makes it a lot easier to uh, become friends with... Um, the different political parties, which we will explore a little bit in the future. We are honest, which also increases our goodwill resting point. Very good. Also improves the personal growth of all of our citizens. Hopefully you'll understand a bit more how that works later. And then, of course, we are nominated by the emperor himself to become the mayor of the city. No elections in the first couple of eras. We are the emperor's appointee. No one can retract that. But once we get to era three, we'll have to compete and try to get reelected every few years in the city. Connor grew up working alongside his famous father, Patrick Kilgannon. His father's trusted aide, he grew to care about his co-workers' well-being. When the Emperor of Austria calls upon Ireland's best foreman, famous for his efficiency and low death rate on construction sites, to supervise the founding of a new city, Patrick declines politely and sends his son instead. And that is going to be us. Now we do get to choose out one of three locations. I'm hoping they're going to add more in the future. Um, I have already played on, well, I, apparently we're selecting the cauldron. That's not actually what I wanted to do, but you click it twice, bam, the cauldron's where we're going to be playing on. Eh, it's fine. Probably going to be fun. Okay, so welcome to the new city. We are Connor Kilgannon, son of the famous Patrick, who supervised the construction of Grand Canal of D Dublin with a record low death toll, which is why the Emperor is interested in us and wants to build a new city to connect uh, Vienna to the Adriatic Ocean. So, we are old and my father's old and ill, so he sent us instead. We are granted 500,000 thalers 
to establish the foundations of a new city. And we will change the name. I'm just going to call it uh, Profsburg. Yeah, Profsburg sounds pretty good. All right, done. Welcome to the land. So I see we do have an ocean relatively nearby. There is a road. Um, I'm looking for... I can't really get any good indication as to where the railway might end up being located. I think we probably will end up starting way up here. Good lord, this is actually a really large map. Extends all the way over here. This is huge, actually, I'm not going to lie. This might be the largest of the maps. Maybe. Alright, well, let's go ahead and start, let's say, eh, I don't know, right about here. Right here sounds pretty good. I'm going to create a new district. Now, the way this works is we are going to draw out an area, kind of like so. And you can see it's automatically going to populate a grid of roads for you to use. And this will be the first district. Every city is comprised of several districts. We will create new districts as time goes on. We'll uh, make residential, commercial, and industrial zones in order to meet the demands, so on and so forth. It's kind of what you would expect. There are a few different densities we could kind of plan out. There's the default grid, there's the dense grid, and there is the sparse grid. Now for us, I'm actually going to go ahead and make this a dense grid because I am anticipating in the future this is mostly going to be for residential and commercial areas. And dense, I find, is probably the best for residential and commercial. So let's go ahead and do that. That's going to cost us 356,000 thalers, and it's going to cost us 41 thalers per month in order to make this work. Let's go ahead and confirm our land plans done. Now, we don't get to choose out any of the zoning, at least not yet. Eventually, we will. We do need to place a city hall. That's going to be a requirement. So, we'll place you, I don't know, let's say right here. There we go. That costs 5,500 thalers per month in order to run it, but that's fine. It's the only service we have available right now. 60% residential, 10% commercial, 30% industrial. Let's propose the district, and we will vote on it, but there is no city yet. So, there is no city council. So, we're just going to spend our personal funds, our grant from the emperor and build the city. There we go, and it is by default called Waltondale, which I'm okay with. We don't have to rename it necessarily. I'm not gonna go to those lengths, it's fine. All right, so welcome to Profsburg in the uh, kind of the region or the county of Swarelia, which eventually I believe will declare independence from the empire when the empire falls apart and become the Republic of Swarelia. Not that we're ever gonna become like the president of the entire country, we only will ever have to worry about this one little city, but uh, there will be kind of international politics going on eventually, so it's kind of fun. All right, so starting off, we're not making pretty much any money. I'm going to bump up to speed four. We do have to choose a new invention. There is a research tab. I'll kind of go over a lot of this stuff as we go, but let's start at the very top. First and foremost, we have party support. This is our goodwill with different political organizations within the city. And if you want to know who they are, well, here's the city council. And they're divided up into three different parties at the beginning of the game. We have the Physiocratic Party, which is a left-wing conservative party, kind of authoritarian. Uh, they respect the Empire. They really want to further the interests of the Empire itself. They don't care about independence. They just want, you know, a lot of prestige. I, I don't know. They're, they're, they're just kind of the left-wing authoritarian traditionalist party. We then have the National Swirelian Party, which is very centrist. And lastly, we have the Free Democratic Party, which is a little bit more liberal and a little bit more on the laissez-faire side of economics. Nothing incredibly liberal at this stage in the game. Very traditionalist, kind of old-fashioned. As the game eventually progresses and we go into more modern eras, this will change up a lot, and you're going to find there are a lot of new parties. But for now, they all relatively like me. I have a good amount of goodwill that I could use to try and uh, persuade them on certain political issues. But we'll come all back to the, all of that later. Let's go back to the city view. We have our prestige, which I don't find to be incredibly important. Um... Basically, it just it's for it's for my character uh, Connor. Uh, Connor, I think is his name. Connor Kilgannon. Um, it just it just shows how much respect he has. Basically, he can use that occasionally as political clout, try to move on some uh, faster votes and stuff like that. And sometimes, every once in a while, override the council on something, and people will go with it because he's well respected. Brain power is necessary for inventions, which is what the game is pausing and telling me to select right now. So let's go ahead and take a look at the progress cloud, which you can see here. There are five different eras of technology. We're going to start off in era one. Here we go. And um, each one obviously does some different stuff. For example, if I look at thermodynamics, steam power increases sales in certain industries. There's clothing stores that can be unlocked. A police station is a new service we'll be able to look at. And the railway station which is a special institution we'll be able to build, as opposed to gas infrastructure, sanitation, safety. What we want is Telegraph to start us off. This unlocks newspapers as a new type of business. 
uh, and unlocks the church as a service that we could open and pay for, the shoe store, but most importantly, spread selection. We can set the spread of residential, commercial, and industrial buildings within a district. So whenever we build new districts, we can make sure that we are tailoring it to the actual needs of the city. And I think that's going to be incredibly important. Let's go ahead and start research on it. Brain power is just basically the brain, the uh, research currency that you use. The more schools you have and stuff like that, the more brain power you'll generate, the faster you develop technology, which I actually find to be remarkably helpful. There are some incredibly useful technologies that will make your city so much more effective. So high research, high brain power, very, very useful. We also have our own personal funds as opposed to city funds. This is how much money the city has. This is my own personal bank account. I am getting paid by the city as the mayor, and I can choose to use my own funds kind of in a philanthropist style to build services of my own accord. No need for the city council to vote on something if I'm donating my own money back to the city. This is our deficit currently, minus 48,000 thalers per month, which is pretty bad. But over time, as we uh, develop new industry and residential buildings and we start taxing people, our income will shift. And then this is the happiness of our city. Overall happiness is right here. We have social life, security, physical environment, health, personal growth, which is like schooling and stuff like that, education, and average fun. These are the different uh, indicators. We'll have different services available that allow us to uh, increase these, but those will cost money. Those require an upkeep every month, and you have to pay a lot of money up front to build them. So be careful not to overextend or worry too much about happiness. Right now, their expectations are relatively low. As we progress in the game and get to late eras, uh, the standard of living will be significantly higher and they'll have a lot more demand for these different aspects of the city. So we'll worry more about that later. For now, we're happy with what we have. Okay, let's go ahead and move on. Uh, right now, again, making 43, 000, minus 43,000 deficit right now. Partly because we haven't really, we, we haven't built anything. So there's no taxes. We're paying for the roads and getting nothing out of it. Now there is, right off the bat, a little trick that I'm going to show you guys in order to uh, get kind of a good strong start in the game. One thing you need to know, and this is something that Quill18, who's a, a YouTuber I really like, and he helped uh, expose this game a little bit, but he made some pretty big mistakes in the beginning, and I'm going to try to correct this. The city council right here, you need to change your attitude when approaching this council. Yes, sometimes they restrict you from doing things you want. It is annoying to have a vote and to lose and not get to do things you think are better for the city. The city council is not your enemy. Not in this game. They are a bunch of elected representatives who have the same interests you do. They want to improve the city and make it stronger, make it more prosperous for everybody. That's what they want. They have different ideas on how to accomplish this, but you do not want to bully the crap out of all of them in order to get uh, your kind of authoritarian, totalitarian view of the city to go pass through the law. You don't, you don't want to do that. Don't bully them. Work with them. Sometimes they're going to restrain you. For example, if I'm running a deficit right now and I say, hey, I'd like to open up a railway station that costs, you know, 50,000 thalers per month. They're going to say, uh, no, you're not allowed to do that. We're going to we're going to downvote that because we can't afford it. You're not allowed. And there are going to be other times when you're going to have a really awesome surplus and they're going to go along with almost anything you ask for. You want to build a church? OK, we have a massive surplus. That's fine. Let's go for it. They help restrict you when you're going to make big mistakes and they're willing to go with you when you have an opportunity for expansion. They're not your enemy. If you play the game correctly, you never have to use your goodwill to force them on a particular vote. In fact, when I first was playing this game, the first time I ever had to use goodwill was in Era 4 when I was at risk of losing an election. That's it. Otherwise, I never had to touch it the entire game. I could just work with them. And we'll get down to some of the voting mechanics later. But, here's, but why is this important? Why am I saying this right now? Well, what are we running right now? Oh, right. A deficit. Whenever you are running a deficit, the council is far more open to the idea of raising up some taxes, which we're going to go ahead and do right now. We have a 10% tax pretty much everywhere you go. I'd actually like to raise this up to about 15% business tax and 15% personal tax. And that's about as high as I'm going to want it to be for most of the game. And you can see right now that the Physiocratic Party and the National Swellian Party are totally in favor of this. The Free Democratic Party is relatively neutral. But since we're not making, like, any money, I mean, they can't really oppose it. What do they want us to do? Go into bankruptcy? Absolutely not. So if we go ahead and propose this right now, in fact, I could raise it up a little higher. Now let's go ahead and do 17 across the board. We'll propose this taxing, and because of our current situation, they're going to be happy with this. You can see right here that uh, almost everybody is going to be more or less approving of this. So when the vote comes up, we're almost certainly going to win. Now, why is that important? Because 
the current status of the city. When you initiate the vote is what they're actually going to vote on. I am expecting in a few months, as buildings get done, we're not going to have this deficit for very long. Before I even raise the taxes, I think we're going to go back into the green and we're going to be fine. But because we initiated the vote, while we have a deficit, we are almost guaranteeing that uh, it will pass and we're going to make a lot more money. And that's one of the ways you can kind of rig the system. You can deliberately expand, overexpand, and when you first build a new district and it's not paying for itself and you're running a deficit, you can raise taxes and almost guarantee that you're going to get your, your, your way. It's a very easy way to kind of rig the system, playing on the council and knowing what they're going to do. Just one of the little tricks, I always raise taxes right off the bat. You can see right here the deficit is rapidly going away as we continue to build up some new buildings, get some industry, and tax the crap out of them. We haven't even started voting on taxes, but the deficit is almost gone already. And that's sort of my point. By doing the vote early, while we still had a deficit, we're guaranteeing that it's going to pass. And you might say, oh look, the deficit's not so bad, surely they're going to change their mind about the vote. Nope, exactly the way it was before, they don't care, let's go ahead and begin the vote. And it is easily going to pass, so we're going to make a lot more money now. Now, you don't want to raise up taxes too much, right? As with any city builder game, if you expand up your taxation too much, you're going to find that the demand for uh, industry, commercial, residential drops a lot. So high taxes are not necessarily a good way out of your problem. In fact, I actually find that the best thing you can do is uh, expand like crazy in Urban Empire, and that's a good way to get a consistent income you can work with. Don't raise taxes any more than you ever have to. If you find that you're raising taxes all the time, it means you've probably expanded incorrectly. But now we're back up to a million uh, thalers, sorry, in the city, with a 44,000 monthly budget balance, and we haven't even filled in every district yet. So we're doing pretty darn well. Now we do have very high industrial demand, which I probably will want to take advantage of. Um... I want to build some new districts. I'm kind of trying to figure out where we're going to be placing it. Hmm. It's not really a lot of good places. I suppose I could sort of fill out this entire area of the map with industry and this entire area of the map with residential and commercial. Yeah, that's not so bad. Let's go ahead and create up a new district right now. We're going to build it kind of where we were before. Something something kind of like this. Uh, yeah, I, I feel pretty happy about how this one looks. Now we're going to go ahead and set this to sparse. And the reason is, I'm going to be making this entire district uh, industrial. And I find that uh, if you're going to do industrial, you almost always want to do a sparse district. The reason being, when eventually you upgrade from a low density zone to a medium density, if everything's really tight, well, the industrial buildings don't really have anywhere to go. They can build like one per block, and that's just not very effective. Where if it was sparse, you can probably fit in two or three medium density uh, industrial buildings in this district. So we're going to go ahead and do something just like that. This is going to cost us 326 thalers, uh, sorry, 1,000 thalers uh, right up front with a 38,000 per month cost, which you can see already, all of the parties are perfectly happy with this. Even the uh, even the laissez-faire right-wing party is okay with this because we have a pretty nice um, surplus and plenty of money in the bank. So that's not going to bother them at all. Now I am not going to, wait, actually, you know what? No, I'm, I'm sorry, I am not going to build this district. I forgot. Before we do that, I want to research Telegraph so that I can specify that I want that to be an industrial-only zone. Yes, the industrial demand is very high right now. That's fine. If we wait just a few months, we'll be able to make sure that this district fits our criteria. We do have occasionally some special pop-ups, including Telegraph, because we are researching Telegraph. When you get about halfway, usually you'll get a special event for it. The city administration is formulating regulations on telegraph usage as the city is about to be connected to the Continental Telegraph Network. Do you prioritize municipal usage or private use of the telegraph? Now, it doesn't always tell you what this is going to do. Uh, I'm pretty sure that if I do private use of the telegraph, it makes all commercial and industrial buildings more effective, so we're going to go ahead and do this. Let's see... Uh, actually, I take that back. No, it reduces the cost of operating a post office, which we haven't unlocked yet, but eventually reducing that cost by 25% is not half bad. That's going to save us quite a bit of money per month by doing that. So uh, maybe municipal use is actually better. I can't recall. Um, that's just one more thing about, you know, you, you kind of have to practice this game and kind of learn what the different, um, the different pop-ups are going to be because they don't really tell you up front, which I will say is a little bit sad. Uh, there are definitely areas where this game could communicate information to you a little bit more effectively, but oh well. Notice, by the way, that we're making 70,000 failures per month right now. We've almost finished out this district, and we have a ton of money in the bank. Every district in your city should be making you a profit if you have done it, your job correctly. 
Now, one thing I am going to do in Waltondale is I'm going to modify this district and I am going to place a grammar school right here. I'm going to propose this. The city will have to vote on this in order to place it, but we're trying to get a little bit more education, increase the personal development of everyone in our residential area, and try to develop more brain power so we can research things like the telegraph a little bit more efficiently. Now, because we have so much money, notice that even the Free Democratic Party, which is less government involvement, less government services, is completely supportive of this. They see this as a good thing that we can easily afford, no problem whatsoever, which again, you know, go ahead and if you, when you're when you're doing well, go ahead and expand your services. When you're doing poorly and you have a deficit, the council will vote on taxes. Just know how to work with the council. Give them an incentive. Uh, make make them feel comfortable about expanding the city, and you're going to find things go really really well for you. Now we're going to go ahead and do a normal vote. We could spend our personal funds in order to build this school, but I'm not gonna. Let's spend some of the city money. We have a huge surplus. If we had more prestige, what we could do is spend two of it to have a quickened vote where we just. Um, where we have the vote in like a couple of months instead of almost a year. So all three parties are very much in favor of this. We can actually look at this right now if we click on the policy. What we could do is actually talk to these individual parties and try to appeal to them. Like so. If I click on a party, I could plead with them, demand something from them, or threaten them. And that uses up goodwill with the party to try and swing them in your favor. Now what someone like Quill18 did is uh, he bullied the crap out of the parties. Every single thing he was voting on, he would appeal to them, and he spent up every bit of goodwill he had, and eventually the parties just didn't appreciate that he was being a dictator, and they would vote no to spite him. You don't want to do that. Work with them, don't bully them, just kind of go along with it. Be a pragmatist. You'll find that if you're, bring, if you're letting a good foundation for your economy, they'll go with you on pretty much everything you ask for, no need to bully. Telegraph is officially done, so we have unlocked newspapers and shoe stores, the church, and we can choose our own spread for a new district. Now I'm going to go ahead and pick up thermodynamics because I would love to access the railway station. That is going to give us a huge boost in our industry. Now, we're not going to be able to build a new district or modify the existing district until they have voted on the uh, issue at hand. So we have to wait one more month. Now they're going to vote. Begin the vote. Should be a landslide. Now, anytime you are voting on this, all you need is a simple majority. If you win by one vote, that's fine. That is all you need, no problem whatsoever. So, if it looks like it's a pretty close vote, but you're gonna win by a small margin, don't fret, nothing to worry about. You will be fine. The grammar school has been built, excellent. You'll see now that our personal growth for our cities, uh, citizens have gone up. So, um, yeah, and every service has a radius associated with it. As we build out new districts over here, this grammar school will affect the residential areas like so. That won't be a problem. But let's go ahead and build out a new district because we have high industrial demand. And we're going to do exactly what I said I wanted to do earlier. So if I build it something kind of like this, I think. Set it to a sparse grid. Uh, this stuff is already set. Good. If I build you like so. There we go. Perfect. Um, something like this is probably okay. Uh... Playing with districts can be a little bit rough. I'm kind of worried about wasting this corner space over here, but I'm not sure there's much I can do about it. So we're going to go ahead and build it like this. Again, cost me about 328,000 Thaler. Everyone's in support of this. Go ahead and confirm. We are going to set this to being an entirely industrial zone. This is where we have a lot of demand. And reason being, I don't want to have houses over here that are not going to have access to any of my services, my schools and stuff, when I build them and place them over here. It is much better to dedicate a good section of land just to industry, and you can focus on upgrading uh, industrial services and stuff in this uh, in this sector and not worry about residential needs and environmental needs and stuff like that. Just worry about roads and making sure that your industry is feeling pretty good. So, yeah, not going to worry about that. In the future, I will expand to have purely commercial and residential areas over here. Let's go ahead and confirm up the zoning. I do not need any services here. It's not going to cost me anything to operate it from services. But I will spend about 38000 just to maintain the district and the roads and everything else. But, good news is, industry is, uh, demand is so high that we're going to make a ton of money off of this district. And here's one cool thing. As we expand the commercial and industrial areas, we're going to create a whole bunch of jobs. And because there's a bunch of jobs and a need for labor, the residential demand will go up. People will be moving here because they want to have those jobs. And as we create new jobs and as we fill in new uh, houses, and there's much more of a consumer base, that increases the need for the commercial and the industrial. And honestly, you can just kind of piggyback off of that, growing both at the same time pretty easily if you are able to pay attention to your industrial and commercial needs 
and meet those. And once you start getting to full employment, go ahead and build out some new houses. And uh, those will uh, become the new workers that will encourage people to go ahead and set up some new industry. So there you go. Physiocratic Party wins the election. The National Swirlian Party came in second with 36% support. And the Emperor Napoleon has died. Just a couple of little world events and stuff. It is 1826, if you don't know. We're going to vote on a creating a new district. Once again, I expect this to pass by a landslide. We're still making a ton of money and have 4 million thalers in the bank. Plenty of money to work with. Pretty soon, I'm looking forward to opening up a railway station. And we'll talk more about that stuff as we go. Ah, now you can see that the council occasionally will propose an, uh, a solution to something on their own accord. So, for example, it is hereby proposed that legislation allowing limited liability companies be enacted. Now, in this case, it will kind of give you an idea what happens. Uh, you can see where the parties line up. The green area is what this policy would fit into. It's a very liberal right-wing party. Uh, I'm sorry, solution, policy. The physiocratic, of course, being left-wing conservatives, the least likely to be supportive of this, but it's actually not too bad. Odds are pretty good they will be supportive. And they will tell us what will uh, occur from this. So... The demand, the citizens' demand for personal growth, security, health, and so on, will increase. Our, ex our citizens will expect a higher standard of living that we'll have to meet. But, if we scroll down here as well, we can see that the services that we create will be more effective. So they demand higher personal growth, but our school is more effective, which means, actually, it's going to be better for us than anything else. I like limited liability companies. We are going to support that. The physiocratic party, likely not to like it. And considering they did win that election, uh, they may have the highest number of delegates. They have 23 council members, as opposed to 22 and 16. Well, if we look at this and we want to appeal to parties, I mean, right now, it certainly looks to me like we're going to win. We have well over half of the council, and honestly, the Physiocratic Party is not even that opposed to it, so things are looking pretty good for us. One cool thing, though, is we don't have to appeal to the Physiocratic Party. Sometimes the other parties will do that themselves. So the, uh, the Free Democratic Party, or whatever, will sometimes appeal them to try and swing the Physiocratic in my direction. I don't have to spend my goodwill. Odds are pretty good they're going to do it for me for free. Anyway, that's about where I want to end this video. I know it went a little bit long, but I hope you guys can see... We're setting up a pretty solid foundation right now, and we're making a ton of money. If you know how to use, uh, how to work the economy, and you know how to play nice with the city council, this game is not that hard, in my opinion. And we'll be following up on that in the rest of the series. Um, I'll probably be talking a little bit slower and playing a little bit more casually going forward, but hope you guys are looking forward to that. Be sure to hit that like button if you are, leave a comment with your suggestions, and subscribe if you are new. My name is Provis with Urban Empire, and I will see you guys next time. <laughs>